Hello, everyone. My name is Ivan Krnić, and I'm so glad I can be part of the DevOps Enterprise Summit this year. It is truly humbling to be here with you today. I come from Cross. We are a professional services company that works across Europe. We help our clients deliver better software solutions, and we do this by helping them in four key areas, cloud native development, complex integrations, data science, and business agility. In this talk today, I will share experience from our own journey in searching for a better way of working and how DevOps principles and team topologies approach helped us come closer to that ideal. To give you a bit more context, Cross is a professional services company. That means that we don't focus so much on our own products. Instead, we work with our clients and help them deliver the best possible software solutions that would enable them to reach their business goals. Our journey has been happening in various forms and shapes for the last 12 or 13 years, especially interesting where the last three or four years since the speed of innovation really skyrocketed, as well as the complexity of the technical landscape. In this complex world, our delivery teams started to lose pace with the technology. What we were experiencing was not enough communication in teams and between teams which resulted in low knowledge sharing, which further resulted in continuously reinventing the wheel. Although some teams have already solved some problems and established good practices, other teams were still struggling. And what is worse, they were inventing new ways to solve those problems. As a result, the level of standardization was low. For every new project, for example, we were asking ourselves which technology stack to use. We were a group of people with many skills capable of delivering in any technology stack prescribed, but we were also bad at standardizing stuff. And all of that further resulted in an expensive delivery process. Reinventing the wheel is, I'm sure you know, not an easy task, and it takes both time and money to do it right. And that directly impacted our delivery schedule and our bottom line. We found this to be a huge space for improvement, and we hypothesized that we could gain improvements by changing the way our teams are structured and the way those teams interact. The result of this experiment was pretty neat. We found improved collaboration, improved knowledge sharing, and lower cognitive load on the teams. That positively impacted our delivery process in terms of shorter lead time, less friction in the delivery process, and higher team engagement. All of this created also a positive atmosphere and prerequisites for subsequent organizational improvements, and not to mention positive impact also on business results. So let's dive deep into details on how this happened. To better understand our journey, let's go back to the early days of Cross. In 2008, for three years in a row, we were shortlisted on Deloitte Technology Fast List for EMEA and Central Europe. During this period, we have doubled in headcount for six, from 60 something to around 120 people. All this put additional stress on our organizational structure and processes dealing with managing people, managing projects and managing knowledge in the organization. Friction was obvious. For every new project, for example, we would form a new project team and it would take this team solid three to four months to get into a really productive state and all of this on a six month project. Additionally, since we were growing fast, we had a lot of new colleagues that were missing skills and knowledge to be effective in the team. Our first turning point happened in 2010 when we realized that we cannot improve further using the concept of project teams that form for the project and the journey after the project. So we started forming long-standing cross-functional teams with the idea of better knowledge sharing and having at least a couple of people ready to take on a particular task. In other words, we wanted to eliminate situations where people were the bottleneck and the world would stop if they went on vacation or something similar. This move to long-standing teams worked perfectly. We achieved so many benefits here like decentralized work management, elimination of bottlenecks, increased efficiency and better knowledge sharing. What our teams continuously aspire to is to own as much of the delivery process and supporting infrastructure as possible in order to reduce dependencies and increase the flow of features. Apart from the delivery teams, we also had a team called internal IT team. This team takes care of all the hardware in the company and provides servers up to the point of the operating systems. 
They also take care of other infrastructure services such as email, file sharing. They take care of the laptops that we work on and so on. But what is important here is that the internal IT team would provision a new virtual machine to the team, and then the team would install and further maintain all necessary middleware components, such as application servers, databases, integration components, and similar. This allowed the delivery teams to own all the environments and configure them as they saw fit. Every delivery team had the skills to open up an administrative console of, an, for example, application server to configure database connections and all other artifacts and deploy the application. But then the cloud native happened with all of its upsides, such as moving to the cloud, scalability, elasticity, low technical and administrative barrier to entering the cloud, a new mindset that supports modularity, easier decoupling in runtime environments and better automation tools. More automation leads to shorter feedback loops short feedback loops in turn enables us to learn faster. So it's easy to see why cloud native approach and cloud environments are so appealing to modern customer oriented companies. But cloud native is not easy and there are a number of challenges, especially for incumbents in the industry. So cloud native is much more complex and from a technical point of view, there are literally thousands of products and providers in the current CNCF landscape. Cloud Native also introduces different development paradigm, the one that is focused on decoupling and modularity, especially in runtime. It also requires a different organizational setup, the one based on autonomous teams, and a different organization.